Hello, welcome to Fendi Disc Golf. My name is Mike Jewell. I'm right here with uh, Mike Sale. We're going to watch the 2023 Daniel Bow Memorial. Weekend number two. Weekend number two. We got pros here. Um, some really fun uh, disc golf ahead, and we're going to do the front nine. Yeah, welcome to Kit Carson. Here we go. Let's do it. Okay, we're watching today Drew Gibson, PDJ number 48346. Who cares? <laughs> we got everybody calls Chris Pinnegar Jr. Yep. But he told me he's not Jr. Uh, isn't his father Chris Pinnegar? Yeah, but he told me he's not Jr. He keeps saying to it. Then we have Cupcake, and then we have our AM champion, Matt Goller. He's super stoked to be there. Yeah, super stud card. We got some SoCal legends and Drew, who is always a contender, winner on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. So it should be a good card. All right, hole number one. We have 335 feet. You must stay right of this mandatory tree that we're passing right now. It is a par three. Uh, what do you like to throw on this one? Uh, usually it's going to be an overstable fairway driver, so people are going to throw you know, their Firebird Felon. I know Drew's been throwing a Scythe, I believe. I'm not sure who makes that, but it's got an Air Jordan stamp on it, and we'll probably see it all over the course today. Nice. Yeah, when I was filming these drone shots, it was so windy. You'll see the drone like jerk sometimes. It was about to blow over. I'm glad we didn't get that in the tournament. Yeah, right. yeah, Drew's going with the hyzer release here, just penetrating straight. Let's see if we can see it finish. Oh, we got a good skip and got around those rocks, so he should have a look for two. Mr. Pinnegar on the box. I'm sure he's going with a firebird of some kind. Yeah, that that mandatory man. I mean, it gets it in your head. It gets in your head. It's yeah. not really that in that in play, especially for these pro guys. You know, it's just like. It does get in your head. You're staring at it, you're like, don't miss the mandatory, don't miss the mandatory. Cupcake doing the same. And the, the real thing here is, you know, these guys are starting off, it's their first throw, they've got the jitters going right now, and you know, you're a little bit too aware of your body sometimes. You don't just do what you're confident in, and that will allow people to either shank it by overcompensating or early releasing and missing that mando. So it is in play just Shut enough to really affect your throw. Yeah, we had our AM champ there, played that three rounds already the weekend before, and he just laced it perfectly. Good bid by Pinnegar. I think he's got the fence there to, you know, save him so he can give that a safer run. That's why he turned it over, I think, a little bit. Ooh, caught a little bit of metal there. Here's Matt. Let's see if he can start off strong. Oh, see. that's confident. Banged it. That's a great 28-foot part to start your round. Sorry, Matt. Feeling the groove and, you know, just kind of get going. And, oh, wow, Drew really got up there. Yeah, he was able to take his little three feet off of the uh, off the fence because the fence is out of bounds. So This is a good birdie to start with. This isn't something that um, I'm necessarily expecting to pick up, uh, but it, it feels good to get it. It's kind of one of those... Um, you know, solid holes. It's not a bonus hole per se, but you feel good about getting the birdie here. Yeah, I told Matt as we were walking away from this hole, I was like, hey, Matt, you won the uh, AM weekend and now you're leading the pro tournament. There we go. <laughs> Hot start. Keep Hot it up. Hot start. Keep it up. All right, we're going to have two birdies, two pars, kind of what you would expect from a pro card out here. All right, on to hole number two. This is uh, one of my favorite holes on the course. It's a really tight fairway here. Um, they added in a couple of mandatories. Uh, yeah. This mandatory tree here on the left, you must stay right of that. Yeah, that's the new one, which is good because it's preventing people from taking that big sidearm that we saw a lot of people take last year. Yeah, because it puts the other fairway in danger, the opposing fairway that's right across the creek. There's another mandatory on the right right there. Must stay left of that. And then the green gets really skinny right here. And uh, we witnessed a lot of people going out of bounds here on this green. Yeah, you'll notice a trend at this course. There's a lot of out of bounds right by the basket within 10 or 15 feet, especially on these shorter par fours to add, you know, just enough danger where you have to think about it. And it looks like Drew got over on that one. He might have missed that second mandatory. I couldn't tell there. Yeah, it looked like he missed it. So he'll go to the second drop zone. He made the mistake that you want to make. You don't want to go be here and you don't want to miss the first Mando. Those are the two mistakes to avoid because it's pretty easy to get up and down from that second drop zone. Matt had a great shot. We'll see what pinnegar has got here. Looks like he's got a driver in hand. Mm. 
No, it looks like more of yeah. a stable mid-range putter, like actually. Yeah. Could have been his rock. Cupcake's got a fairway in his hand. Yeah, he might be going for this. Yeah, he put a lot into that. He looks like he made the same mistake as Drew. I actually couldn't tell if he missed that. It, it, it was close. Yeah. Looks like Pinnaker stayed in bounds. He should be probably about 220 to 240 feet from the pin. Still behind that second mandatory, but it's not going to be in play here. Just have to contend with that leaning oh, tree. No, oh, oh, no. That is out of bounds. He should be able to get up and down for five, though. Oh, no. <laughs> Matt asking gets to roll back to the left. He little bit of a cut roller, kind of laughing at himself there. So Drew did miss the Mando. Here's the drop zone shot. Oh, that did not look good. Okay. Good ground play for him, though. Yeah. He at least has a lot of eyes or didn't expect that. Cupcake going forehand to mitigate away from that OB, but there is OB directly behind the pin. Oh, uh, that's well done. Nice. That'll tap. All right. So Pinnager is here, you know, about, what do you say, 45, 50 feet from the pin? So yeah, you can, you can yeah. see the whisker right in front of him. Yeah. So this is for five. Oh, and just go. Oh, out, of out, out of bounds on the bridge, again. yeah. That sidewalk plays uh, out of bounds, sidewalk and beyond. Yeah, and the one that wraps all the way on the right side of the fairway. Hey, excuse me, that was for four. Oh, Matt does the same thing. So Pinnagers yeah. are going to have a putt for six directly behind the pin. Is Drew to save his par? Should be pretty simple. Drew's such a confident putter, and I, I like his rhythm. He has this really nice rhythm. You know, it's not an overextended time that a lot of players do these days. It's he has a very specific cadence and rhythm to his his pre putt ritual, and um, it was kind of cool to watch. I got to watch him all three rounds this uh, this weekend. So, all right, here's Pinninger for six. Oh, God. Oh, no. oh, at least it's sap, but he's going to be tapping in for hopefully a seven. That is not how you want to start your day. Matt cleaning it up. I think that was a bogey for Matt. Yeah, that'll put Matt back to, to zero, and Chris is going to go plus three after hole number two. Triple bogey. Yeah. All right, we've got hole number three here. This is kind of a risk or reward shot. You've got one section completely surrounded by OB. You've got the creek on the left. You have the street on the right. And then there's this road in between the two sections of the hole. A lot of players elected to lay up here and just take their par. This is playing definitely above par. Less than 10% of the field birding it on the weekend. But people are kind of taking, you know, like a slightly understable disc and throwing it on a hyzer to try to access the green. So we'll see how our players attack it here. When I was watching you play this hole, I asked you, you know, you, you said you were, uh, wow, really close to the out-of-bounds there. Drew actually went for it, and he's, he's just a few feet in bounds, but he is on the uh, safe island. But I asked you, you're predominantly sidearm thrower, right? No, I, I throw what shot, you know, I would say caters to the hole the best to give me the best odds of what I feel I can execute. Oh, Cupcake goes out-of-bounds long, but he'll be putting from the good side of the, the island. Why do you ask? Because I feel like the gap, the bigger gap is on the left-hand side that's OB the entire way. Exactly. It just seems like somebody that was a really strong sidearm thrower would throw that gap, but I didn't see a single person throw it all weekend, which to, blew my mind. To me, that's, that's a really nervy shot, Mike, and if, if you make the mistake early, then all of a sudden you're essentially re-teeing on one of the most difficult holes on the course, and anybody playing this tournament should be able to execute that very easy shot to the short pin, 100 foot layup shot just to take your three and then attack the holes that are much more attackable on this course. So it's kind of playing the long game. Gotcha. Yeah. You see Matt here having to mark in bounds. He did hit that tree and kick out of bounds. So marks himself in, does a really nice up shot here, sidearm, and uh, he's about 25 feet from the basket, I believe. This is Pinnager for a comeback birdie, I believe, after taking that seven. Let's see how he responds. Oh, he knew it right out of his hand. <laughs> Still upset about the last hole, and you almost expect that to go in when you kind of are fueled by that triple the last hole. It's Cupcake trying to save his par here. Mm -hmm. 
tap in for fours. You see, there, there's a handful of players having trouble here, and that's that's why a lot of people elected to just play this safe. Drew inbounds, catches in on the birdie. That's that's stroke time, folks. Yep. That'll move him uh, to two down after three holes. This is a, a very good start, considering one and three really aren't holes that anybody's step, stepping up and expecting to get. You may be hoping to get, so two through three is great. All right. Hole number four, 285 feet. You're going to have a creek that's going to play as casual on the right-hand side of the fairway. Uh, once you pass that creek, I believe it's sidewalk and beyond that's out of bounds. You know, typically, you're not going to see anybody go to the sidewalk, but you're going to see a lot of people in the creek. Yeah, that, that's the danger here is just trying to push it too long. It plays slightly uphill, so you feel like you have to overcompensate a little bit, and a lot of people just misjudge it or pull it right a little bit to avoid those trees. Drew a little bit early, but that's the mistake to make is to be left. So he'll still be inside the circle for his two. Pittiger here taking the wider right side yeah, gap, and he's going to skip right oh, up to yeah. it. Yeah, that's, that's parked. It's good to see some momentum after hole two. Ooh, Cupcake that. going straight at it. Yep. And that hangs on as well. That's the other tricky part is he goes from grass to dirt, and that dirt is so much faster than this grass, especially we teed off at 7.30 during this round, so grass is still moist and you don't really get skips off the grass so that's the other factor we're contending with here here's matt from inside the ditch we were talking about Ooh. cashing in beautiful that putt. is a confidence booster big time great putt matt we got drew with a death putt here going straight at that ditch and there you see that repeatability again that is something that's so difficult to do because putting is so mental and drew just has that dialed Yep, cupcake, like, getting his too. Looks like we're about to see a star frame here. Come on, Penniger. No pressure, dude. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We got a star frame, boys. That's, Good job. That's what you're expecting. This, th That's one of those holes that you are walking up and you're like, this is a two that if I want to compete at this tournament, I need to get all three rounds. All right, hole number five here. You kind of have an elevated hill that that um, ditch creates right in front of your face. Uh, forces you to throw a little higher than you might want to if it were a flatter ground. 275 feet, another par three. Who's that handsome bastard right there at that tree? No one knows. <laughs> <laughs> if you go long, you're out of bounds. There's, a, there's an OB line this year on the right-hand side and straight of the basket, which was not there in years past. But This is, looks early from Drew. He... Yeah, skipped to about 30 to 35 feet, but you know Drew's not happy with that result. Apparently I live in the ghetto, in the hood. I live in the hood. <laughs> the, hood the hood of Venice, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man, those cop cars driving by. Go get them, boys. All right, and Cupcake's going to show us the forehand here, which, in my opinion, with the way that this whole slopes is the, the better play. Oh, and Cupcake shows you why. I also like the wind too. The wind is going to be coming from, uh, like, kind of headwind from your right shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, it's to me a better play. If you if you yeah. throw a backhand and it gets a little bit too much belly, then it will carry yeah, far it's too. It's a lot easier to make a nose angle mistake on that backhand than the forehand. Right. True oh. off the top. He's just going to settle for par here, unfortunately. There we go, Ooh, Matt. Lean it in. in there, dude. <laughs> a little corner pocket doesn't hurt anybody. He had a small group of people following him around, you know, oh, excited for him. Yeah, it was awesome. That's great support. Penninger looks like he did the same, a little low left. These baskets like that. They do not like you to be strong uh, on the strong side. They like to kick out, similar to a mock X. And Drew cleaning up his three. There we go. All right, we're moving in now to hole six. This is a par four. We're going to have OB on both sides. If you go over that fence and there's an OB line that runs pretty much parallel to it, starts off narrow and widens a little bit as we approach the creek. A lot of players here are going to elect for, um, you know, backhand roller. You'll see people take this uh, tight tunnel with kind of an understable uh, faster disc. 
um, and you might see a forehand. So kind of like pick your poison here. You want to land about here, about 200 feet short of the pin, and then you'll see a lot of people pitching up with an overstable putter, you know, like a zone, a harp, maybe RX3, et cetera. Uh, most players here should be expecting to pick up this birdie in our field. Yeah, again, the creek plays as uh, casual, so if you're in that water, you just play it where it lies, um, or you can play it uh, first available, good space. I would like to see them play this creek as OB. You know, we've had a lot of water in Southern California um, this year, as most people know, and a lot of snow. So there was a lot of running water, and you don't typically see that run as casual. And I know in this tournament, you know, your winner is typically, oh, Cupcake's going over the top. Uh-oh. Um, oh, that was, is he in bounds? He's out of bounds, oh. yeah. He, he just skipped out of bounds. Yeah. Well, he just he ran it too tight. He he throws a type of gap that I like to throw when I'm on this. I like to flirt with that out of bounds line. He just didn't flirt with the out of bounds line on the left at all. He just went kind of with the fence line. So that's the risk reward. Drew piping this. I think this is similar to a T bird. I'm not sure if it is a T bird, but he was throwing this all weekend. That and his understable buzz. He likes to throw it on that strong hyzer angle and let the disc do the work. Uh, Matt throwing a worm burner there. Do it again. Oh, he does it again. Oh, that slipped out. That just came right out of his hand. Yeah, I think it, that's going to end up putting him in the creek. Oh, Cupcake. Cupcake. That's... So there was something strange that happened here. Cupcake ended up in on the side of the hill in what he deemed to be an unplayable lie. And he just could not comfortably get a stance behind his lie. And... Uh, Oh, great Beautiful shot from, from Pinnegar. Absolutely. Almost bounced that one in there. Drew, a little sidearm up shot. We'll probably see Cupcake approach that lie here. So, I didn't film him standing by the lie, but he just ended up doing a rethrow. And he threw a lawn dart. I mean, <laughs> that's that is a very difficult well, shot from his that angle. He threw like a 550 foot drive that had to go, you know, 290 feet. Yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of kind of impressive. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, and that, that a little. ended up being a double for Cupcake, I believe. That's gonna put him at plus one. Ouch. Drew is cruising four through six. Here's Pinnegar after nearly throwing it in for eagle. That'll he's, get him the bird. He's back on track. After taking that triple, he's now gotten the last four, I believe. So he went from plus three after hole two back down to one. And there's there's still work to be done, but that's very tough to crawl back. All right, what we got in seven here, Mike? Hole number seven, 238 feet. This is shorter than years past. Uh, typically, you would see it another 60 feet. But this is a basic, simple hyzer, I think, with an overstable mid-range, or you want to spike it in there with an overstable fairway. A lot of, a lot of people were throwing uh, sidearms as well, which is a better shot, but I don't really have that in my game. So Yeah, it's a, it's a fast green, and so people are typically electing to take that sidearm to kind of negate how the hill is sloping downhill and right to left. Yeah, and you'll, you'll, you'll see Pinnegar skip a little earlier than he wanted to. He gets hung up behind that bush. Same with Drew, it looks like. But he's going to sneak around, and he'll have an inside-the-circle look. See if Matt can clean up the forehand. That looks better. Got it out wide. Gunning for the pin. Nice shot, Matt. Beautiful throw. That'll tap. Cupcake doing the same. Cupcake just throwing it like it's a, like he's trying to go 50 feet. He barely threw the thing. That's beautiful. Beautiful shot. All right. All of our players, ooh, yeah, Pinnegar got caught behind. This is the one place in the hole you really don't want to be other than very long because you have, it's hard to have a look, and Pinnegar shows you that. Yeah, I wanted to show an angle of what he was looking at, but you couldn't see the basket at all. So, <laughs> and, and Drew made a mistake here, but he got away with it, and you know he's now got a 25 footer for birdie, very manageable. And Drew's not missing that. Five through seven. He is cruising. That's what you want to do here. Typically, a winning score of this tournament has been about 30 under, and so you just want to be, you know, on that 10, 10, 10 stretch. Got to keep your bogeys minimal, one to two at most per round. 
there's a lot of holes out here that we're going to see on the back that are difficult to birdie and most of the field is not going to birdie for them and they'll be just playing for par. This is not one of them. <laughs> this is a, a really fun signature hole. Um, when you're flying through on this drone, it looks boring. You're like, what is going on here? You've got a ton of wind coming over from your right hand side. And then what you're trying to do is land on this little square island through this fence here. Um, if you don't, you go to the drop zone. Right, drop so. zone's about a 60 foot depth putt looking right at the pin. And the difficult part about this hole is that you're throwing downhill. So controlling the height and controlling the speed because you can make a you know mistake on your nose angle and just fade right over that fence out of bounds. Other difficult part, that Southern California rain again, this grass is sticky. So you kind of have to land it right on the road if you're playing that skip, which is the more conservative shot. Matt taking a more direct approach, trying to get it to fade, and it's just gonna stick right there. That'll be about 40 feet. <laughs> you, saw, you saw Drew tap his non-existent helmet. You know, like <laughs> football players are like, oh, that was my fault, and then they tap their helmet. <laughs> He's like, my bad, my bad, Drew. Cupcake making the same mistake. Let's see if Penninger can redeem the card here. Okay, that's a better line. If it's got the distance, this looks great. It does look great. Skip. Beauty. Yeah, he's going to be about 22 feet for his birdie. This is a difficult putt to run. Yeah, because it's, what, only 20 feet past the basket? It's out of bounds? Yeah, not even. It's like 18. Oh, oh. that's a great committed bid from Cupcake. Hitting the band. Let's see if Matt can. This is a, a gutsy putt. That's committed as well, oh. and it looks like he went OB there. That's the danger. Man. All right, Drew. Can he go six down? Oh. Mm. Sensed a little hesitancy from him there. That didn't look as fluid as his swing has looked this round so far. Yeah, you know what I mentioned earlier about his rhythm and cadence that he has? He did yeah. not have that on that putt. No, he, you could see a little bit of his balance on his back foot, kind of not as solid and static as it typically is in his swing. There we go. There's a good comebacker for Matt. I'm going to put him back to plus one. Yeah, unfortunate bogey there. This is a hole where par is okay. You want to birdie it in this pro field because you know that you know 40 to 60 percent of the field is going to get it. But uh, par doesn't hurt. Bogey does though. Hole number nine. This is the opposing fairway of hole number two. Uh, 465 par four. Um, they tightened up the mandatories on this hole this year. It used to be that tree we just passed. Now it's these two trees here. If you miss those mandatories, you go to the drop zone. There's a creek on the left-hand side that is marked OB the entire way up the fairway. And the basket's about 10 feet from the basket. This is probably the closest basket to OB, and it's right on this dirt patch where the discs just do not want to stick. And this is another hole that they added a mandatory. I believe in years past there was one mandatory that you had to fly on the left side, but now you've got about 30 feet between these mandos, and they are you know, about 180 feet from the tee. So it's it's a nervy tee shot. Yeah. Plus, again, the wind coming down that fairway. And Drew's going mid-range here. This is a buzz. I believe we saw Pinnaker miss. Oh, and Drew kicked as well. Yeah. So the players are having a difficult time with this already. Cupcake is just going to crush on, one up the middle. On the load on one. <laughs> Man, one year I um, on hole two, I parked it which sounds crazy, I understand. Parked it, <laughs> tapped in a two, and then got to this hole, and I shot two feet past the basket, tapped in a two on that. <laughs> wow. I know, and at the, uh, at the, you know, the award ceremony, I said, hey, if anybody can do that next year, I'll give you 100 bucks. <laughs> Nobody did it. Pinnaker, but. good shot. Looks like Drew missed the Mando as well. He's gonna throw this hyzer. This is, this is a tough drop sound to get up and down from. This, this is a very, uh, gratifying par to get. Looks like both of our players may have successfully done that. All three. Matt, that looks early. Oh, it, it flattened out a little bit though. It's just got a stick. And it yes. does. Ooh. It does. It hits that cabbage. Here's Cupcake from, you know, about 130 feet. Man, if I could jump putt from here. <laughs> Committed putt. He's going to make the typical mistake of leaving it. 
uh, you know, 20 feet to the right. And this is a nervy putt. Yeah, this is sketchy. Good commitment, cupcake, great putt. Beautiful putt. It's a good birdie to get. Beautiful putt, youngster. I know you're watching right now. Good there clean we go. Up. Well done from the drop zone from our players. I'm assuming that Drew and Junior are going to hit both of these. I'd say that's a drawback from having these two fairways so close. You, you see those players from the opposing fairway walking while these guys are putting. That's, that's kind of tough, but. All right, there you have it. That was the front nine of the Daniel Moe Memorial 2023. That's weekend number two. Number two. Number two. I am your host, Mike Jewell, Pin Deep Disc Golf. Thank you, Mike Zale, for being here. Absolutely. Please join us for round uh, number one, back nine. See you there.